Join us now, Breitbart economist and finance editor John Carney, along with host of the Ben Ferguson podcast and co-host of Verdict with Ted Cruz. Actually, Ben Ferguson here live and in person. Uh, so Ben, I'm going to come to you first. Yeah. This, this is fascinating. John Stewart knows better, but he also knows entitled and arrogant as well, very well himself. Yes, that's like, his, that's like what he does. I'm going to come back only one day a week. Right, that's right. how important I am. Not I'm, all five I, days I work, just one show a week I am during an big. election year. But Mar-a-Lago, the drug set is worth $18 million. And here you have a, a, a 2.3 acre property right down the street that's yeah. trying to sell for $200 million. Mar-a-Lago, 17 acres. Yeah. Um, John Stewart knows better than that. Of course he does. But this is why I came back one day a week to work just to make sure that Donald Trump would not become president of the United States of America again. And that's how important John Stewart is to young idiots in America, that they will watch him one day a week. And that is uh, the, the definition of your kind of a big deal. I, I do think the best part about watching like True Social and everything go public today is how many Americans said, I'm going to buy this. I don't even know what the return is. I'm not doing it from an investment standpoint. I'm doing it to stand behind Donald Trump. I'm doing it because this is my way of getting involved in the egregiousness of what just happened. And I also think when you saw that the, the bond kick back from a half a billion dollars down to just like, you know, 125, there's a lot of Americans like, all right, I'm all in. What do I do to help? How can I help? How can I make sure this doesn't happen to him? And we make sure that we protect other conservatives in the future. So there was a lot of people, I think, that invested. It was not about money. And I think this tells you about the support for Donald Trump going into the presidential. I mean, you want to look at a real poll. When people are willing to put their hard-earned dollars to invest in something they really don't know exactly what it is, because it's associated with Donald Trump, because they know he's being persecuted, that should tell you a lot about the mindset of voters going into November. Let me just point something out. This is straight from Andy McCarthy. The counterparties all made money. They did yeah. not lose money. Fraud is when you lose money. That's a victim. And also that in the with these calculations, the, who is James, Letitia James? All the banks said they relied on their own due diligence, their own valuations, their own calculations. They never even relied on these estimates from Trump. But again, John Stewart knows better. Well, that's the thing. The, the, the way the judge calculated what these properties are worth is actually just wrong. He is making a serious legal error. He said that the properties could only be worth what their tax value assessment is. The tax value assessment, particularly in Florida, but in most of the country, does not equal what the market value of the property. The banks aren't lending against the tax property. They're lending against what they think they could sell it for if they had to repossess the property. So using the tax value was insane. There are laws, very good laws, that say that your tax value of your property cannot go up too quickly. That the reason why we have those laws is so that if you own a piece of property that appreciates, not taxed you, out of you it. can't get taxed out of it. So that keeps down the tax value of a property. When it changes hands, it gets re up to what the market value is. But so when he, he's looking at these properties and saying, they say Mar-a-Lago is only worth 18 million. Sure, for tax purposes, that doesn't mean that's the market value. The banks care about the market value. The judge is wrong. This decision will be overturned. It was outrageous that they tried to make him give a half a billion dollar bond. Even the 175, 125, whatever the number is, well, it's still but, outrageous. But the yeah. assessor said they looked at how many members were at Mar-a-Lago and their revenue at Mar-a-Lago, not what the resale value of Mar-a-Lago would be. So um, I, I think so, this is right for appeal. But let's look ahead. Can, I, can I just yeah. raise one thing? Who is Tish James seeking restitution for? There's no victim. Right, exactly. There's no so, victim. So right, it's so just a can, money grab by the state at the best case the, scenario. The Washington Post wrote an uh, editorial today. Trump deserves his day in appeals court. And they say... Wait, I'm he sorry, you said the Washington Post. Yes. Let's let that, let might, that sit in for everybody. That's, he, that's, Trump whoo. might eventually be forced to pay the full judgment in the meantime, allowing him to exhaust his legal options without pushing him toward bankruptcy is the fair and correct outcome, as it would be for any other American in the same situation. No American should be put in the situation that Tish James has put him in.
No, 100%. All right, speaking of, I guess I think the, the Washington now Post I'll is up the rest looking of the show. Uh, uh, at the elections, right? That's why, yeah. they're, that's why they're writing this. But they're also, as we look to elections, there's going to be a star-studded group of actors and comedians, singers, and former presidents who are expected to attend Biden's fundraiser at New York City's Radio City Music Hall on Thursday night. It's certainly going to add to Joe Biden's growing war chest, which currently sits at $37.5 million ahead of Donald J. Trump's. But, John, yeah. I mean, this is the exact wrong message for Joe Biden to send to the American people. You're sitting with the elites and the billionaires and the former presidents, all the while telling the American people you're blue-collar Joe. They call BS on that. And they look to Donald Trump and go, that's the guy that's going to represent me and fight for me. Right, that's right. He's going to sit there with a bunch of movie stars raising money from this. And, by the way, these aren't just any movie stars. These are known left, you know, the, the, some of the farthest left people in Hollywood, in the, a, a, entertainment altogether. I don't think Donald Trump's that worried. He is. He made five hundred billion dollars, or five hundred million dollars, in just the last couple days. He is now a billionaire. He's on the Forbes list. He's not worried about Joe Biden's war chest right now. He's wondering, really, you know, how how his great great grandchildren are going to spend the fortune that he has accumulated through Trump through Truth Social. I talked to somebody today, and their only response about the lack of the kind of lack of fundraising by the Republicans so far. Don't worry. They'll all start giving. Yeah, they'll start giving. And Republicans traditionally start giving a little bit close to the election. They want to see what they're going to get. There's also Republicans right now, they're very upset with the Republican establishment. They wanted to see what would happen at the RNC. They wanted to see it turn hands from where it was. And I also think there's another X factor about this fundraiser. This tells you that at least the idea that they could maybe get rid of Joe Biden is now dead. This is them coalescing, saying, okay, we're ride or die with them now. It's a real campaign. There's no Michelle Obama coming in. Mm. This is our guy. This is, we're going to have to stand with him. Let's go to New York so at least we can have fun. And we'll act like we like Joe Biden. And they don't like him. The enthusiasm gap here is incredible. The Democratic Party really can't stand Joe Biden. And this is a party for elites to hang out with elites. And the president just going to happen to be in the corner. And they're going to shuffle him around. And hopefully he won't get lost. And and That's frankly, the they're terrified. Theory. They are really scared. This isn't a measure of how much money, how much they love Joe Biden. It's how much they are scared that they are behind in all of the polls. Trump has not raised as much money, yet he's ahead in poll after poll in all the battleground states. He, the, the best they can say is, well, now Biden's gaining on him a little. Yeah. Biden is the U.S. president, and he's gaining on the challenger who was already, you know, thrown out of office once. He's coming back. He's defeating him. They're donating money out of fear that Donald Trump is money coming is back. Money is not going to fix the shuffle. Money is not going to no. fix the slur and the mental capacity. It's not going to. And I think the American people see that every day. But let's stick with this election theme, Dagan. New teeth. That would fix. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> go, you, well, you go. I told you I'd shut up. I told you All right, I'd shut let's up. Let's talk uh, independent candidate RFK Jr. He officially named Silicon Valley lawyer Nicole Shanahan as his running mate earlier today. Watch this. I also wanted a vice president who shares my indignation about the participation of big tech as a partner in the censorship and the surveillance and the information warfare that our government is currently waging against the American people. In fact, the very failure of both parties to do their job to protect their founding values has contributed to the decline of this country in my lifetime. Maybe that's why I see so many Republicans disillusioned with their party as I become disillusioned with mine. So, John, uh, with uh, Shanahan, the pick here, uh, by the way, as, as the announcement was going, he mentioned that she was a surfer. I'm like, is he picking Tulsi Gabbard here? I don't know where, I don't know where he was going. Do you like this pick? Because I don't know anything about her. I do. Her. So I, I know a little bit about her. She's a very smart woman. She's very involved in a lot of causes like autism. I, I believe she has an autistic child. Mm -hmm. She has been very, she is, a, a, by all accounts, a very brilliant young woman. She's not, she's, much younger than, than Kennedy is when I say young. And, but she is definitely uh, an interesting out-of-the-box choice. He could have picked a lot of people who have been in politics for a long time. He didn't. He went with somebody who, frankly, knows one of the biggest problems in our country, which is Silicon Valley. She knows it very well. I think that really speaks well for him. And I, I, you know, I think that it's be a better choice than any of the more traditional Democrats he might have chosen from. 
RFK Jr. hurts Biden and actually helps Trump in a three-way race in the swing states. I, and by the way, this is all a money pick. Yeah, I Don't hope so. Don't you love a woman yeah. getting chosen for her money? I, I hope so. I like the pick from him because I know that she's a radical. She's someone that has supported radical uh, ideology at the DA picks. She's been an advocate for bail reform, prison reform, letting people out of prison. But somebody earlier today sent me a text like, all right, I kind of like this, you know, R RFK thing. And I was like, okay, do you like the Green New Deal? Well, no. Okay. Do you like no new housing in the suburbs being built? Because that's his thing he's in favor of and wants to stop building houses. Well, no. I said, do you like the idea of the American government covering interest rates above 3% on housing if it goes above 3%? That's what he stands for. That's socialism. And it would be the most, the biggest financial expansion of the government in history. It would bankrupt this country. He's in favor of that. And then I said, oh, he also is an advocate for gutting the military. Are you in favor of that? Well, no. And I said, finally, he wrote an article where he says he wants to jail climate change deniers. So if you think that he's a moderate guy or an alternative to the other two sides, he's more radical than Joe Biden is. He's, he's basically AOC masquerading as like, I'm this third option. I, look, I think he's very charismatic. I had dinner with him out in Las Vegas a couple months back. He's a very charismatic guy. But go back and look at what he's said and what he's written. When you want to put people in prison if they don't agree with your Green New Deal, that is not a moderate, that's not a third party, that's a radical socialist. But this is why he we is should welcome him to the race. We right. need more people on the left running for president I, because they shouldn't be voting for Joe Biden. Bamboozled Vote, Biden. If, if, look, I will say, if you are on the American left, you should not be voting for Joe Biden. Vote for Kennedy. He deserves your vote. Vote for Shanahan, Shanahan Kennedy for the American left. Do it, people. Democrats, call to action. There you go. This is me shutting up. Thank you both. John Carney, <laughs> Ben you, Ferguson. Thanks for having us. That was a pleasure. All right. Still to come.